Welcome to Angling Buzz brought to you by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're going to be talking about spinnerbait fishing. Now, it's late July. This is a great time to be out on the water. Now, spinnerbaits, they come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, blade configurations, and catch just about everything that swims, from bass to walleye, trout, big pike, big muskie, even smaller panfish. And today, we're joined by James Linder of Angling Edge, and he's going to share some insight into spinnerbait fishing today. James, thank you for joining us. You know, Troy, you're right about that. Spinners are really a diverse family of lures that work for a wide variety of different fish species throughout the entire year. Right now, for example, it's prime time for spinner fishing for walleyes. Now, just looking at spinner fishing for walleyes right now, they're in a wide variety of different situations, from anything from shallow weed beds in six to eight foot of water with a light bullet sinker in front of it, out into the secondary depth levels, anywhere from 15 to 25 foot of water, where you're using a bottom bouncer or a three-way rig to present the spinner rig and night crawler harness going into even deeper water throughout the summer months a lot of those fish start suspending out in deep water where a lot of guys use snap weights and boards to get these spinner rigs out away from the boat spinners work for a wide variety of different fish species now what are some key thoughts on spinnerbait fishing for bass well i have one bait here uh, this is the classic uh, spinnerbait that's used by bass fishermen across North America. This is a Pro Series 3 a ounce uh, Terminator spinnerbait. The big thing about this bait is where you can fish it. Dense weed cover, emergent vegetation, around wood, dark water, preferably with a little wind blowing in. The biggest thing is, is that you can cover a tremendous amount of water. Flash and vibration are one of the key elements that trigger bass into biting this bait. Uh, when you look at another in, a spinnerbait I want to show you is an inline spinnerbait. Now this is a very, very small one. This is a classic Vibrex uh, size zero that I actually use a lot for stream fishing for smallmouth bass or trout in this particular case uh, for trout. This is a very, very small profile bait, but it's the exact same thing. Inlines, you have both inlines and safety pin uh, configurations that are used in a variety of different situations throughout the year for a lot of different fish species. Now, James, I know you're a big musky fisherman. What can you tell us about spinner baits for musky? Try to tell you the truth, spinner baits are a must for any musky fisherman. There you go. Oh, nice big one too, Jeff. Musky fishing is a game of odds. In the warm water months like now, you put on a small to moderate size inline spinnerbait and start casting. Keep casting, and I mean keep casting. The key here is to cover as much water as possible. Sooner or later, some fish is going to bite it. There he Got is. Him? Nice, yeah. big one, Jimmy. Nice. Holy smokes. They're also a good bait to trigger fish into biting on a figure eight maneuver at boat side. I would have to think more muskies have been caught on an inline spinner bait than any other lure category. I've also caught a lot of muskies on larger safety pin spinner baits. Again, just like bass spinner baits, they tend to perform better in dark water conditions where you have dense weed cover situations. Well, that makes me think of color. What can you tell us about color choices for spinner baits? As a whole, uh, spinnerbaits really represent pelagic forage. It's a lot of minnow bait profiles with flash in that flash and re reflective colors. But you'll see a lot of different attractor colors. And what I mean by attractor colors, a uh, fire tiger, chartreuse, uh, really brightly colored baits. And then you actually have some patterns that represent uh, bluegills as well. It just depends on the forage you happen to be fishing. We've been fishing red and pink. One thing that we did not talk about that's really sort of important is understanding blade configuration. You actually have three different styles of blade. One is a Colorado. These are round blades. They have a lot of lift and vibration. And then you have a willow leaf, which is a more of a flash with less vibration. And then you have another blade called an Indiana, which is like a cross between a willow and a Colorado that actually has sort of the best of both worlds. But uh, uh, a lot of different spinner baits are made with these different blade configurations based on how that bait wants to be moved in the water. For example, musky fishing, a double Colorado has a really high lift and I reel it relatively fast and it stays really close to the surface. 
willow leaf uh, configurations which don't have that much lift have the tendency to be uh, run lower in the water column so you can get the bait to run deeper. If you're not fishing with spinner baits, that's a mistake because there's not one species of fish, game species, in North America that do not like biting on spinners spring, summer, and fall. Yeah, without question, spinner baits should be a part of everybody's tackle box no matter what they fish for. Well, James, thank you for taking some time out today and sharing your thoughts on spinnerbait fishing. And stay with us after this short commercial break. We have more angling buzz. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Oh. Get hooked on our trophy wallet. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty. There. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. Developed from the latest technology, Blackfish Technical Apparel outperforms, so anglers have gear that they can trust in, no matter the conditions. The Rumble Bug from Northland Tackle. Its performance will blow you away. This finesse-styled crankbait comes in 15 colors that surround a high-quality balsa body with through-wire construction. This snack-sized powerhouse, with its tight action and reliable tracking, gives you longer cast and unmatched durability. The Rumble Bug from Northland Tackle. We are Walleye. Simple, fast, and easy. This automatic launching and loading system on BoatToTrailer.com makes unloading and loading your boat a breeze on both roller or bunk trailer configurations. This system is a simple one bolt install. No more hanging over the boat, no more cranking in the boat, and no more wet feet. Speed your boat ramp time by visiting BoatToTrailer.com. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Up next, it's our Timely Topics feature. We're going to go walleye spinner fishing with Brad Hawthorne. Hi guys, Brad Hawthorne. I'm here to talk about spinner fishing as it pertains to walleyes. Now, midsummer, early summer, late summer, you have a bunch of different things going on. You have the bug hatches, which are either going on or ending. You have everything that spawned during the spring. So you have bait everywhere. And what spinners do is they mimic bugs, minnows, fry, all those different types of things. That's why it really pays. If you plan on being a proficient walleye angler, you need to learn in-depth techniques with, with spinner fishing. So, a couple of the different things I like to do. First, weeds. Weeds, my go-to sinker, worm weights, they're super cheap and they're super effective for over the weed tops. Now you may say, where do I start? Weed fishing walleyes, and that's simple. Any lake with weeds that grow from 20 to about eight feet of water and there's a gap in between the top of the weeds and the surface of the water four to six four to eight foot somewhere in that in that in that realm is where you're going to want to employ that bullet sinker and two to four foot lead on your spinner rig now over weeds i really prefer to be natural your copper hammered blades plain uh, plain copper silver brass, bronze, any of those natural hues is what I like over weeds. And the one thing I have to remind everyone over weeds, everyone thinks crawlers or leeches on spinners over weeds. I have a lot of success with an Aberdeen hook and a minnow over weeds. It's actually my number one presentation, so don't forget the fathead minnows 
when you're fishing over weeds because sometimes it's the only thing you're going to get bit on. So bottom bouncers. Bottom bouncers, this is your R style bottom bouncers. I have these from one ounce all the way up to four ounces. And you may say that's a big spectrum of weight to have and it's really not. Anywhere I'm fishing over a rock or snaggy areas, your R style bottom bouncer is key to using. And you're gonna wanna use one ounce for every 10 foot of water. Now here's a trick for you guys with R style bottom bouncers. They're made to tick the bottom and kinda just drag across what a lot of people do is they just take their R-style bottom bouncer, they rig them like this, and they go, okay, well, that's it. Well, if you take these and just bend them straight up, we just made that guy a foot longer and about 20 to 30% more snag resistance. So put that one in your tackle box bag of tricks for snag-free fishing with bottom bouncers. Now. You also have your reed runner style of bouncer. I like this around gravel and things like that. These are basically your two main bottom bouncer styles. You have a mini reed runner and then you have your traditional R style. And you also have the slick stick by Northland. They go all the way up to four ounces. My personal favorite for running when you have to telegraph the bite back to you. Having that slick stick down there, it's a big piece of stainless steel. You feel every rock, every pebble, every bite. So. If you guys love fishing, bottom bouncers and spinners, go buy yourself a couple of slick sticks and notice a difference for yourself. Now, some of the bigger bodies of water, Erie, um, even Superior, Michigan, they will run snap weights on boards. And I like to employ that same one ounce per 10 foot of water. Everyone's kind of got their own formula for weight on boards when it comes to spinners, but that's the one I kind of use as a rule of thumb to dial in weight. But in open water basin trolling situations, we're usually using that six to 10 foot spinner length, you know, just to get it farther away from the weight. So keep in mind, there's a bunch of different ways to do spinners behind boards. There's a multitude of different, different techniques. Another one is quite simply putting this, the snap weight 50 feet ahead of the whole spinner component so that weight is so far away from the spinner that it's not even affecting the bite. So blade fishing, spinner fishing, this right here is about as basic as you get. This is an over-the-counter Northland spinner right here. Over weeds, two, three, and four size blades. Open water, four, five, six, and seven size blades. And then for just bottom bouncer fishing in general, you can use a combination of any of those blades, but that's my rule of thumb on blade size for open water. I want fish to see it. I want to bring more fish in from a distance. And then for everything else, kind of use a mix of both. Again, sp uh, spinner fishing, not just for shallow weeds, not just for 30 foot of water, not just for rock piles, not just for sand flats. You can fish spinners anywhere. And again, I would encourage everyone to get out there and start mastering different forms of spinner fishing to put more walleyes in the boat all summer long. I like to do a lot of fishing with artificial baits, but this time of year, the dog days of summer, sometimes pulling live bait with spinners is the best way to go. We'll stay with us after the short commercial break. We got our buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. Marine Pro from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment for all types of marine engines. Just pour it in. Marine Pro works to clean and lubricate your entire fuel system, helps engines start easier, run smoother, stabilizes fuel, and helps prevent costly boat engine problems. Fast starts and smooth running power have never been this easy. Seafoam Marine Pro, available at Fleet Farm. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install. Fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with smooth moves. 
Hey everyone, Troy Peters and Mr. Bluegill, and this week's Buzz Bite Report to you is coming from central Wisconsin. We are fishing bluegills, yes, Mr. Bluegill's fishing bluegills, on uh, the Wapaka and the Washera County lakes. And uh, this time of the year, middle of summer, uh, what happens is these fish will start to migrate over the deep flats, and having good electronics is super important. Uh, we've been utilizing the Mega Live on the Hummingbird and uh, getting out over these deep basins, scanning for you know the schools of fish, and then casting to them, um, staying on the Minkota and keeping you know the fish within distance, and really just chasing these things around in the basin. Um, it's super simple fishing. Uh, what I like to do is just cast a small little tungsten jigs with a piece of crawler, uh, just a, a bare, you know plain hook. Um, no bobbers, nothing, just cast out and work the depths. When you see them on the locator, um, a lot of times these fish are going to set up in that uh, 10 to 15 feet of water or so. And uh, you can also fish them with slip bobbers as well. Um, sets your, set your floats up about that 10 to 12 feet, uh, cast out and then just kind of slowly start working them back and uh, you're definitely going to catch a bunch of fish. Thanks Troy. Now let's head over to Green Bay, Wisconsin with Dale Strohshine. Walleye right now on the lower bay from the mouth of the Fox up to, I would say, Sturgeon Bay has been more consistent. It always will be. It's shallower that way. There's just more numbers of fish and the water always has more color. So therefore that bite always to the south is always gonna be better. But keep in mind, it's much more difficult to find big fish. When you come from Sturgeon Bay working north right now, we're having some difficulties right now in the month of July. And the reason being is we've had a really big alewife population this year. A lot of them are dying off and I think what's happening is those big fish that we're noted for up here to the north on the waters of Green Bay are just gorging themselves right now on all these alewives. And I think that's why the guys are really struggling. We wish you all a tight line and have a great day. Thanks, Dale. Now we're going to head back to Minnesota and join Billy Rosner on Lake Vermilion. Uh, the walleye bite is still holding its own. Uh, key is early in the morning. You know, get on that water at daybreak, fish until that sun gets high. Lindy rigs are putting out fish with a half a crawler on rigs. A slip bobber and in the weeds, that's putting out fish. And then also long line trolling with number five shad wraps or lead core in those mud basins some of your big sand flats with sand grass, that's putting out fish also. Muskies, what I like to do for muskies when that water temperature is starting to peak, I like to downsize this time of year with like a number five or six blue fox or a maps or a booker tail, something like that. I like dressing it up with a kaolin grub of some sorts and long bomb cast. To stay off those reefs, make super long cast and speed, it's all about speed. Just burn in those little bucktails as fast as you can to get a reaction strike. So have a great week and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head to Leech Lake with Toby Cavallivog. As you can see, we have a nice mixed bag today here on Leech Lake, and that's really where the fishing's at right now. Right now, the walleyes are really good one day, and next day, maybe not so much, a little bit finicky. There's a lot of food in the water. They're just finishing up with the mayfly hatch, so they're transitioning a little bit. I find some pushing shallow, some are pushing deep. They're not all right in that same area anymore, so bobbers and leeches are still working, but jigs and jigs and leeches, jigs and crawlers, bobbers and little leeches, little crop pieces of worm are good for these panfish and the weeds. So North Walker Bay, all the rocks, those are where the keeper wallies like these guys are, and uh, the bigger ones are starting to push a little deeper. Panfish, seven to nine feet up in the weeds, that's where it's at, and the muskies are just starting to push shallow. Some of those rocks are starting to go now, and that's where it's at. So it's just heating up here on, on Leech Lake. I'm Toby Cavallivog. In 2021, Minnesota watercraft inspectors found that 95% of boaters were doing their best to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. In short, drain plugs were removed, no standing water was inside the boat, and no zebra mussels or plants were found on the boat or trailer. Thanks for following these simple habit-forming rules. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from motors and live wells. Remove all boat plugs and dispose of unused bait in the trash. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, 
panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Want to save even more at Fleet Farm? Sign up for Fleet Rewards for exclusive offers and deals. Earn points every time you shop. 500 points gets you a $5 reward. It's free and easy to sign up, in-store or online. Plus, earn rewards even faster with the Fleet Rewards credit card. Get four times the points every time you use your Fleet Rewards credit card. Start shopping and start saving even more with Fleet Rewards at Fleet Farm. Like you and my friend, you're not very much like With me. You by my side, I see things differently. You're my best friend, yes, my best friend. Rolling through this world together, you're my best friend. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're going to start out with the Pro Mag Planer from Offshore Tackle. Now as you can see the size of this thing, this is made to pull big weight, big lures. This is the largest planer board that Offshore Tackle offers. And if you're a, a troller, this is something, you know, if you're musky fishing or even pulling heavy weights for walleye or trout, salmon, this is something you definitely want to consider from Offshore Tackle, the Pro Mag Planer Board. And next, some line from Suffix. This is Suffix Advanced Monofilament. Now this is great, not only on its own like eight pound, if you just generally fish bass, even trout, walleye, even crappie, you know, eight pound monofilament is really great. And then if you fish braid, this is a great leader. It adds a little bit of stretch to the near zero stretch that braid offers. A great monofilament line from Suffix, Suffix Advanced. Up next from Terminator, the Pro Series Spinner Bait. I've used these a lot, these are great. They have an amazing array of color, blade, and size combinations. Uh, perfect for summertime bass fishing, especially right now. You can even use these into the fall. And this is a nice gold. I like this pattern for like stained water, lightly stained water. This would be great. Terminator Pro Series Spinnerbait. And next from Northland Tackle, the Walleye Crawler Hauler. And this is great for high speed trolling, which can be key. You know, Northland Tackle, they also make blades, their butterfly blade, that's great for slow speed trolling. This is great for higher speed trolling, the walleye crawler hauler from Northland Tackle. Also from Northland Tackle, the Reed Runner Spinner Bait. Now this is great, you know, spinner baits really can be used all season long. And these are also great for, you know, if you fish Northern Pike, but primarily for bass, you know, fishing around weeds, uh, wood, even uh, big boulders, these are fantastic. A lot of different color options and different blade configurations from Northland Tackle, the Reed Runner Spinnerbait. And next, a bigger bait from Muskie Mayhem Tackle, the 79 Trigger. And as the name implies, a size seven blade, a size seven Colorado blade, and then a nine Magnum blade. These are offset blades. Give the Muskie a little bit different look and a little bit different vibration and thump, which can be key, especially if you're fishing pressured waters, Muskie Mayhem Tackle. They're known for making incredible musky baits. And something like this, this size and shape, is actually perfect this time of year for covering water, whether you're trolling, casting, figurating musky, the 79 trigger. And next, balls out mounts. Now, these are high quality mounts, very sturdy, made in the USA. A lot of different configurations to fit a variety of marine electronics. Uh, you have a lot invested in your marine electronics and you want to make sure they're secure and balls out has you covered. Blackfish offers a variety of different apparel. Their storm skin gale pullover, this is great. This is windproof, waterproof, kind of weatherproof as you say, very, very comfortable. And also Blackfish offers their cool core technology for these hotter summer days, four way stretch, very, very comfortable. And if you visit your local Fleet Farm store, you can just see a wide variety of different offerings, whether it's hooded, uh, long sleeve, uh, they also have buffs. They just have a whole lot of different apparel to cover you, whether it's hot out, raining out, or cold all season long. If you're new to trolling, Lakes and Rivers offers a great option, a great value. This is an eight foot, one piece trolling rod. You know, this is Fleet Farm's in-store brand, and this is a, a 
kind of a moderate medium action to it. So if you're new to trolling, this would be something you definitely want to check out as a nice action. You can pull planer boards. You can even flatline troll with this rod. This is from Lakes and Rivers. And lastly, from St. Croix Rods, this is a technique specific rod in their Legend Tournament Bass Series. This is their Rip and Chatter Rod. Now this is a seven foot, two inch, heavy power, moderate action. And St. Croix Rods, if you don't know, they offer actually technique specific. So this is great for bladed baits, chatter baits. Uh, if you're rip bait fishing, you could even fish big spinner baits on here. And for a lot of bass applications, this would be perfect to pair with a, like a size 150 a bait caster. This is perfect, a legend tournament bass rip and chatter. And you can always shop online anytime at fleetfarm.com and also you can visit your local Fleet Farm store. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. Now there's a lot more to fishing a spinner than just casting it out and winding it in. Temperature, water color, depth of water all play into how you're going to fish any particular spinner combination. Now, as a rule of thumb, of course, the shallower the water, the lighter the spinner you want. The deeper the water, the heavier that you want the bait. And temperature can also be a big factor. For example, in spring cold water fishing, say when the water gets into the high 40s, low 50s, fishing for largemouth bass in shallow, sloppy bays, a lot of times it's just a simply a matter of reeling it in real slow, consistent thump with just a little pull or hesitation with the bait and those little pulls and pauses are often when you get the strike. Now, as the water tends to warm up and you get into summer, that's when speed can be a big factor. Instead of just reeling it slow and steady, now you might be jamming on the rod a little bit more, getting a little bit more action into the bait and that's what triggers strikes. If you're fishing pike and muskies, when you're talking peak of summer, often it's burning blades as fast as you can, right under the surface, but it's not just reeling it straight in. You're using a rod to change the angle of the bait. You're making figure eights at the side of the boat. So know that when you're spinner fishing, it doesn't just have to be a cast and wind situation. The more action you impart into a bait, often the more strikes you're gonna get. Oh, got him, got him. Know that when you hit the water, spinners are one of the best tools for covering water, and in some situations, they are hands down the most effective tool that you have in your tackle box. The old spinner bait, crappies, bluegills. Northern pike, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, giant muskies will all fall for spinners and be sure you've got some in the tackle box because chances are, if you're throwing a spinner, you're gonna be getting some sweet action. We're at our local Fleet Farm store. We're about to draw the winner of the Angling Buzz Fleet Farm sweepstakes. They're gonna win an awesome weekend up on Lake Vermilion, a guided fishing trip, a $500 gift card for Fleet Farm, as well as a $500 Rapala tackle pack. Cameron? The winner is? Judy Erickson, Sock Center, Minnesota. Congratulations, Judy. And we want to remind everyone to follow us across our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, as well as our website, anglingbuzz.com. Well, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.